And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny! It is time. It is time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, my brother, my some third thing. It is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to country line dance our way into the third and final segment of The Big Shoe, and it is said Big Shoe, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our terrible, horrible, no good, very bad movie of the week! I'm not saying the movie's bad, I was just, that's a title of the book. Yes. Uh, and this week, we bravely continue our summer of yo by watching the sixth film in this series the 2006 film Rocky Balboa. I just saw the preview you played. This was PG? I mean, I guess. Yeah. Because there's no real cussing and no nudity. Just a little bit of uh, blood and they use they, they do it like a black and white and just a bunch of red makes it look like paint. Or a, a, a Herschel Gordon Lewis film. Yeah. But I'm shocked that this was still PG. Because there's a bunch of freaking fighting in it. I'm, I'm shocked by that. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, well, back in the early days, some movies were PG that should have been PG-13. Uh, fuck that. This was 2006. Yeah. Not 1983. So I'm shocked that this was PG, but it, I, it makes sense. There's no nudity. There's no cuss. So there's just a bunch of yos. So explanation of summer. Uh, we do uh, theme summers every year. I think this is the sixth theme summer we've done. We did the summer of Star Wars, which was actually harder than I thought. We did the summer of Saw, which I really, really liked. We did the summer of... Fred Willard, because Fred Willard had just died. That was an incredible summer. Yeah. We did <coughs> the summer of... Oh, wait, mother. <laughs> that was incredible. We did the summer of bottoming, where we watched films on IMDb's list of the bottom 100 worst movies of all time. And then this past summer, we did the summer of COVID exploitation, where we watched cheap movies meant to capitalize on the COVID-19 pandemic during the lockdown. And uh, that was horrible. But there is a movie called Coronavirus Conspiracy. It's just two dudes in a house. Yes. And it's freaking hilarious. Um, and so I am honestly excited for the rest of summer 2023 because, as I said last week, I had such a horrible time watching Rocky V in 1990 when it came out in theaters opening day. I had such a horrible time watching uh, the new Rocky movie that I swore off all Rocky movies after that, meaning from here on out, these are all new to me. Yes. And I'm excited about that a fresh look about, uh, uh, for me for the Rocky franchise, and I have heard that Creed 3, which came out this year, is one of the best movies of the year, and so I'm excited to build up to finally watching what some people are calling the best film of the year. I'm excited for that. But enough about me. Honey, you're looking good today. Thank you. Look, looking great. <laughs> uh, looking handsome, looking fit. Have you lost weight? <laughs> I saw a man yesterday with a big white beard and a top hat and he and also what helped was that he looked like he was definitely on something so I said honey I know that that's not funny why and she turned and said holy shit that can't be Bonnie but but and so we had a nice laugh. Um, so us, uh, we here we are six films into our summer of yo, 
Buddy, how how are you feeling about the summer of Yo and about Rocky as a character? Well, well, uh, there are like so many different ways to grade this on, okay? Like, as far as a summer of, it's been one of the better ones. Okay. Okay. Like, but also we've done some really shitty summers. The summers have been really fucking rough. Yeah. I am scarred forever by Madonna swept away. That mood sucked. So that guy did snatch. That guy did, did the, the gentleman. gentleman. Mm. And all the horrible coronavirus movies. My God. So, in that light, definitely one of the better summers of. Yeah. As far as the Rocky movies as a whole, the first one is a great movie. The rest of Formulae are crap. This movie is still following the same formula. He just had the, they just had the son take over for the Adrian part. And they had, had, I, I same, felt like the same I emotional like, argument, scream at each other thing. I don't like the fact that they gave Marie, who had like a two-minute scene in the first film, like almost co-starring in this film. I, yeah. I I found that to be weird. Yeah, I I found it weird that like. You just adopted a family off of the street? Yeah. And I How also well did doubt you know that this girl to begin with. And I, I doubt that there's a lot of people who went to go see Rocky Balboa, Balboa that automatically went, Oh yeah, Marie. Yeah. From the streets. I I am in, in I am intimately familiar with every small incidental character from the entire Rocky Bursts. Yes. So that upset me. I was happy. I will say this right now. Uh, I have it on my notes somewhere. Uh, the actor playing Spider Rico is the same guy from the first Rocky, but this is not the same Marie. Aha. Uh -huh. Different actress. That kind of upsets me. But that's the exact same Spider Rico from Rocky's first fight in the first Rocky film. Okay. I appreciate that. And apparently at some point in time, the fa the the priest, the one priest in Philadelphia died, and so he had to start getting Spider Rico to say prayers. But yeah. that's fine. So, like, how are you feeling about Rocky? Have you had enough Rocky? Have you had enough of Rocky? Uh, he himself pretty well... I've had enough of just Sylvester Stallone forever. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. This this movie well, is... Well, uh, on the positive side, after this, we're moving into the creed verse where uh, Michael B. Jordan will be taking center stage and uh, Sylvester Stallone becomes a side character who completely disappears by Creed 3. Nice. And I think for a lot of um, for a lot of Rocky fans, they were upset about that. But for people powering through this series in one summer, I think that will be a positive. That will be a positive. So that's good. So this is a 2006 movie, and oftentimes when I talk about a film that was done a while ago. I look up to see what was happening in pop culture that year. And so here's an odd aside. In 2006, actor Willie Shatner sold one of his kidney stones to GoldenPalace.com for $25,000. Nice. I only bring that up because the ring girls in Rocky Balboa have goldenpalace.com upon their chests. <laughs> yes. And so, it, I, I just find that weird. Just wanted to add that odd fact. Rocky Balboa is 
the Ocean's 13 of the Rocky franchise. Okay, I, I'm not familiar with the Ocean series, so... They did Ocean's 11, which was a remake of a classic film, but Ocean's 11 was a huge hit. Such a huge hit that the studio said, we need to rush Ocean's 12 into production. And all the people who did Ocean's 11 said, well, we've got nothing. The, the, the story is done. We don't have yeah. anything. So the producers found a generic uh, heist script and rewrote it to be Ocean's 12. Yeah. And just added the characters into this script that was never meant to be in Ocean's 12. And that became the sequel. And it, sure, it made money, but it also sucked. <laughs> and so, after Ocean's 12, George Clooney and Brad Pitt and all of that are like, okay, that last movie, it didn't sit right with me. Did it sit right with you? No. We need to make an Ocean's 13 just to make up for Ocean's 12. And George Clooney actually said in one of his uh, interviews that he originally wanted it to be called Ocean's the One to Make Up for Ocean's 12. <laughs> so basically, that is Rocky Balboa. Rocky V was such a bad film that it just sat in the back of Sylvester Stallone's head and it, he just kept getting pissed off and pissed off and pissed off until the point where he decided to redo it. Rocky V cost $42 million to make, which is almost twice as much as this film, which is shocking to me. Yeah. But it And it made $119 million, which means that Rocky V did make money but, but it was, was also, also the, the lowest grossing, grossing film in the entire Rocky franchise, franchise whereas Rocky, Rocky Balboa cost $24 million to make, a much cheaper film, and it made over $150 million, so this one definitely made up for the last one, both commercially and critically. And I remember when Rocky Balboa came out, I was so pissed off at Rocky V that I remember thinking, oh, well, I'm not going to go see this movie. Rocky V sucked. And also, Rocky's too old to be fighting. But then um, uh, George Foreman came back in his like mid forties, and he did okay. Okay, yeah, okay. Except that <clears throat> Rocky has been beaten so bad that he's brain damaged, and yes, everybody but in the fucking as... industry knows about it. This movie should have just been no. I I think I'm gonna no. To be uh, fair, though, uh, uh, as uh, we uh, talked uh, about... No! But I gotta as, be a myth! No! As we talked about last week, um, the, the, the thing that he had, everyone talked to him, doctors and scientists and, and uh, boxers and sports people came up to him after Rocky V and said, yeah, uh, the thing he has is actually not that serious. Said he wouldn't die if he was in another fight. And he would probably be cleared enough to fight again. Just to let you know. And so that was another reason why Rocky Balboa came okay. out is that, oh but yeah, no, I did movie. F up in that film. And I wanted, I wanted him to have this bad thing happen to him because of the drama of the script. But no, he would have been fine to fight. So that's why Rocky Balboa the thing that upsets me is the fact that they don't really bring that up at all. Yeah. In this film, you would think that they would bring up the fact that he can, he can fight again and that his diagnosis was wrong from the previous film, but they don't mention it at all, which is freaking weird. Okay. Now, Jeannie also brought up a great point about okay. the whole Rocky series so far. And another lesson that we have learned in the Rocky movies. Yeah, hit me. You can either be rich and good looking or stupid and ugly. There yeah. is no in between. Yeah, yeah, I, I follow that. That's pretty good. Yeah. 
that has yeah. been Rocky's journey. I like Paulie's gonna be dead when we get to the creeds, right? Oh fuck! I hope so. Me too. But also, Creed Two is a direct sequel to Rocky Four, and like Dolph Lundgren's in it, and whatever that woman was that what was her name? The woman that they cut out of Rocky Four for the director's cut. I forgot her name, and I don't want to find out what her it? name is because I'm kind of happy at the fact that I don't remember what her name is. Yeah. Bridget Nielsen! Thing, yeah. Damn it. And She's another in thing, it, and, like, like... Another thing that pissed me off about this movie, especially sitting here through the whole movie, like, somebody needs to make him just not. Not fight. Somebody needs to do that. And there are no more adults in the room anymore here. Finally. And it really... Finally. Finally. Paulie also, says, "This is the last one, Rock." And I was finally like, "Finally, somebody does say that." That does and it's feel better. Paulie. Yeah. <laughs> it, one positive about this movie is that Paulie seems to be less of a shithead in this film. I mean, in this film, he realizes he's a shithead, which is good. Yeah. He's finally learned that, like, oh yeah, I've been a shithead my whole life. Yeah, you loved, you loved uh, Adrian, and you treated him, treated her great. I treated her like shit. I, I've been an asshole my whole life, and it's like, oh well, finally, there you go. Yeah. Do you still have the robot? But <laughs> you're nothing about the robot. I like where the film opens with an older Rocky who owns a local restaurant and he holds yeah. court and he tells all of his old stories. Like, I like that. But I do... I was not prepared for the return of Frank Stallone's doo-wop music. No. That took me aback. I was taken aback by that. Yes. Holy shit, we're back to Frank Stallone singing doo-wop music in front of a burning trash can. <laughs> it's like, damn it, I thought I was done with hearing Frank Stallone. I, every time I think I'm out, they bring me back in. Um, I will say this, though, as much as I hate the character of Polly, I think he aged better than Rocky did. I don't think Polly looks that bad for the amount of time that has passed well, between 1970 whatever and 2006. I mean, he looked like shit in the first film and he still looks like shit. Yeah, that's that's kind of the thing. I mean, like he's maintained as to yeah. whether he looks good or bad. Like, wow, that's really subjective. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Talia Shire was all upset that she wasn't cast in this film and that she uh, was killed off in between films, but what in the world did she do for the last few movies other than just yell at Rocky when he needed to get yelled at? Yeah, and, and, the, and they, they just graduated the sun right yeah. into that position. Yeah, so I'm fine with losing her. I have no problem with that. So here's a weird fact, Bunny. About Rocky Bell, Rocky Ginkgo Biloba. Um, this film is called Rocky Balboa and not Rocky Six because there already was a Rocky Six. Okay. Rocky Six is a nine minute black and white Rocky parody made in Finland in 1986. Nice. It features Rocky with a, a fighting a Russian boxer, a parody of Rocky IV that had just come out, and it's a rematch, but in this rematch, the Russian just easily beats the shit out of Rocky, end of short film. Okay. It's on YouTube. <laughs> I saw it, and Rocky has these huge freaking eyebrows, but it's creepy. 
But well, that's why this movie it, isn't it, called Rocky Six. Six. There already is a Rocky Six. Six. If you, if you <laughs> got it, we're going to have to play it. It's bizarre. It is bizarre. Yeah, if you got the link, send it to me. Uh, okay. Let's see if I can uh, I like this movie. Or I don't hate this movie. Is it the best Rocky movie? Oh, hell no. Is it the funnest Rocky movie? Oh, shit, no. I had fun with three. I had fun with four. Uh, but it's definitely a better end to Rocky's boxing career than freaking Rocky fun. Yes. And so that's where I am. Uh, is this the best Rocky movie? No, but it's definitely better than Rocky V by a long shot. And that's the thing about the new Indiana Jones film. It's good. It's fine. Is it a great Indiana Jones movie? Fuck no. But it's this much better than The Crystal Skull. <laughs> so it's like, oh, did you like the new Indiana Jones movie? I didn't hate it. Yeah. It was fine. It was serviceable. Indiana Jones and The uh, Last Crusade was such an amazing, wonderful, incredible movie. This is in no way close to that, but it's better than the last one, yeah. so it'll do, that'll do, pig. That's the new Indiana Jones film, in a nutshell, and that is Rocky Balboa. It's not the best, it's not the worst, but it's better than the last one, so you're fine. Indiana Jones is, I'm, I'm just, just overall, I'm just like, yeah, it's okay. Like, I really didn't particularly love Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's a good movie. You know? Uh, yeah. Temple of Doom is kind of a crap movie, but it's a fuckload of fun. Yeah. And then Last Crusade is, in my in my consideration, a good Indiana Jones movie. Love. Love Last Crusade. And then Absolutely that's love that film. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like how they made Shrek, and then they made Shrek 2, and then they stopped, because any other Shreks would just be a horrible film. Yeah. About what? Oh my goodness, yes! All of our puppies have been adopted! Yay! Yay! Oh. Oh. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it's fine. I totally, like, I should have said that in the beginning in Jeff. Oh, that's great. That's great. We don't have to go to the city anymore. That's freaking <laughs> wonderful. Um, I One final thing about the movie Rocky Balboa. I love the fact that as they are going to the ring, Paulie decided to pick the music, and he picked the Frank Sinatra song High Hopes. I effing love that. As his ring music, Paulie... Uh, in Rocky Balboa, he seems to have realized that he's a piece of shit. And so, yeah, he's better. You, I said was! I'm not anymore! People can change! So, uh, he comes out to the song why, uh, to the song High Hopes. If I was a boxer, or a professional wrestler, or MMA, or anything like that, I know exactly what my uh, ring music would be. Yeah. Why can't we be friends? <laughs> would be my uh, music, and I would try to hug my opponent before we did anything. I, if I had to pick another song, I would pick the rap song Someone's Gotta Poop on Dr. Phil by Josh the Bird. That is a real song, and I am trying to listen to it so much that when... It's the end of 2023, and I get my Spotify rewind that the amount that I've listened to the song Someone's Gotta Poop on Dr. Phil by Josh the Bird will astound people. <laughs> Eleanor, can you lower your copyrighted YouTube video that you are listening to on the same table as me? Okay, that's pretty good. I am going to talk about... I, again... I, the thing that pisses me off about these Rocky movies is that even for a... 
I get sucked into the melodrama and the fights, and I cried at the end of this. Yeah. I, I, I at the end when he makes it to the end. And he says to this asshole guy that he's a good fighter. And then the asshole guy is thanking Rocky because he, you know, it, it, like, thank you for fighting me and for going the distance. And now people respect the fighter as a fighter. And they respect Rocky for going the distance. And everyone thought he was too old, but he lasted the entire round. And it doesn't matter that he lost because he lasted the entire round, the entire boxing match and and. And he's leaving, and everyone's happy for him. And yeah, I teared up. And, and like, it, it's it's these fucking melodramatic sports movies. Like, even if I hate the Rocky film, the fights will still get me. It's yeah. the emotions, and I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I hate saying that I cried during Rocky Balboa, but I did. I absolutely did. Yeah. And also, I want to eat at Rocky's restaurant. Oh, well, remember Buca de Beppo, honey? Oh, I miss that. I'm going to order, uh, like, a plate of spaghetti and meatballs. Okay. <laughs> and they give you, like, this massive plate, like, like your parents had a turkey on it in Thanksgiving. Like, this massive plate of food. And it's like, you order one thing, and you basically ordered enough for the whole family style dining so whatever you ate you had enough for everyone oh I miss Buka de Beppo yeah yeah but I'm, I'm I miss Italian food okay so I've got nothing else for uh, Rocky Balboa do you buddy how many yo's ah yes I counted I had a hard time because there was some rap music playing, and I wasn't 100% sure if there were any yo's in that. Yeah. I was surprised at how many yo's I got in the film. I was surprised by um, one of the yo's came from the uh, yuppies who worked with uh, Jess from Gilmore Girls. So I was impressed by that. I thought they'd all come from Polly, but they didn't. Yeah. I counted 20. Okay, I got 18. Okay. So, do you want so to split the difference and go 19? Let's do that. Sweet. Let's make 19 yo. So, number. so okay, so what are we at? at oh, Rocky six? oh, I didn't take the total, but we were at 66. 66 plus 19, that's at least 50. Uh, <laughs> 85? Damn! And we still have three movies to go! Yes, we do. We're at 85. We might get triple digits by the time we end this Rocky franchise. That, that is fascinating to me. <laughs> I mean, I knew we'd get big numbers because it was Rocky, but dang, we're at 85. That is incredible. Yes. Well, in our next episode... We, we are watching what is no doubt the weirdest film in the Rocky franchise. Uh, it's a bit of a departure yes. because uh, there's boxing in the title, but there's no... Uh, it's the 1993 film Boxing Helena. Yes. Uh, starring Sherilyn Fent and Bill Paxton. Uh, and Bill Paxton? It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a departure. Uh, Art Garfunkel's in it. Oh my god. <laughs> and Kirkwood Smith, the death from that 70s show. Oh shit. So this is going to be exciting. Uh, I believe it's already on Cough Cough, but. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I, I already have it. Uh, okay. I. I, I... You, you, some, you put up a bunch at once, and I grabbed it at once. Okay. Yeah, um, uh, I... This is here for us to get a little break. This, this movie, from what I recall, was one of the... the one of your minor Hollywood clusterfucks. Yeah. Not a Heaven's Gate-level clusterfuck. 
But wasn't it like what? originally supposed to be like Dudley Moore and Kim Bassinger and like Dudley Moore went and fucking died and Kim Bassinger had a whole lawsuit to try to break her contract for some reason? Uh, I think that Madonna was attached at some point in time yeah. to this. Uh, yeah, Kim Bassing, Kim Basing, Basin, Kim, Kimmy, Kim B, Kimmy. and Madonna were both attached to be in this, and it caused all these legal problems in this and that. I have never seen the film, which is why I chose it because, again, I didn't see any of the Rocky movies after Rocky Five, so I also didn't see Boxing Out. Yeah, but. Um, it's going to be a bit of a different, because is there boxing in it? Yes, but not the type of boxing that we're used to. No. But it's interesting to see where the Rocky... Bo I, boxing Helena is the Halloween 3 of the Rocky franchise. Yes, okay. There you I, go. I think that would be a so, good guess. Yeah. So, uh, Sylvester Stallone isn't even in Boxing Helena. What? So this is going to be a weird one. I can't wait until uh, uh, Bill Paxton is revealed to be the witch in charge of the Silver, Silver Shamrock Company. Yes. Happy, happy Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Happy, happy Halloween, Boxing Helena. Do, 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 do. Watch. Do, 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 do. And that's my impression of Halloween 3. Uh, so that's next week. We're going to watch Boxing Helena. We're at 85 yo's. This is incredible. And uh, But that's that's our next episode. Now that I look back at this episode, uh, Ocean's 13. Uh, Bernie Madoff. Uh... Bobby Bonilla Day. Gay Monkeys. I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. Yes, I I, uh, I, also felt that it was a damn good episode, but I feel like you're the one who makes those distinctions and gives that label to an episode, and I don't want to step on any toes. But yes, I concur. With your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend May Lynn, and on behalf of Eleanor and Maxwell and Mal and Natasha, I just want to say thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens! <laughs> Thank you. And you rocks. Okay. <gasps> Godzilla, what foul language! Goody Papa do wow cut and print. And thank you. That's a wrap.